Welcome into the Eagles Nest. I'm Mike Baggerman. And I'm Brett Gendra. Today on the show, the Brockport football team had a 17-10 lead at the half for their homecoming game against Rowan. Could they hold on to the lead? Volleyball's Kelly Nowak hits a career milestone for kills this past week. Could she lead the volleyball team back to 500? And the Brockport women's soccer team had three straight shutouts. They had two games this past weekend. Could they keep the streak alive? And Aaron Asquith will join us on the program. All these questions, we've got the answers. All this and more coming up on Eagles Nest. Welcome into the Eagles Nest. Brockport football held their annual homecoming game last Saturday in front of a packed house here on the Brockport campus. The team would get into trouble early when E.J. Genzano set out to kick a field goal, but it would be blocked and returned back for what was thought to be a touchdown. An unsportsmanlike conduct penalty would be called behind the play, and Brockport would keep rowing to just a field goal on that possession. Later in the first half, Brockport down 10 to nothing. Joe Scabilia drops back and hits Jordan Hogan for a 71-yard touchdown return. Nobody near him in the backfield. And before the half was done, Brockport would add another field goal, and Skabilia would find Andrew Mrozik with some room and a nice spin fake. He gone 50 yards to put Brockport up 17-10 at the half. They would trade off touchdowns in the third, including this Tyrone Nichols one-yard run to make it 24-32 heading into the fourth. And then it was all trouble for Brockport. Louis Biaccini would find Anthony Barone for a touchdown pass to tie it. And with 7-13 left to play, Keith Karakin would find his way through the Brockport D for a touchdown. And a scary moment late in the game with Brockport mounting a comeback. Joe Scabilia drops back and just watch for yourself. The Rowan defender breaks through untouched and just crushes Joe. Take a look at this again from another angle. Not a pretty sight. Not something you ever want to see. He would give the thumbs up on his way out by being carried off by the medical staff, but that would not be enough. Brockport drops to 0-2 and loses this one 39-32. Scabilia would go 17 for 29 on the day with three interceptions, a total of 240 yards passing with a touchdown. He was diagnosed after the game with a mild concussion, and as of Monday, his condition for Saturday is unknown. Yeah, it's definitely something you want to see him come back from. Always a scary injury. We're going to take a break, though. When we return, Kelly Nowak from the volleyball team recorded her 1,000th kill of her Brockport career, and also the field hockey team took on Oswego last week and lost. They also took him on again. Find out how they did this past week. When we return, you're watching the Eagle's Nest on BTV. All this, all this, all this, all this, and more. All this and more. Coming up, coming up, coming up on the Eagles Nest. Don't forget to check out Campus Sports Action in the next coming weeks as Brockport men's soccer begins SUNYAC play Friday, September 23rd against Buffalo State at 4 p.m. and Saturday, September 24th against Fredonia at 1 p.m. Welcome back into the Eagles Nest where we give you all your Brockport sports coverage. We switch things on over to the volleyball team where history was made this past week as Kelly Nowak, senior for Brockport, recorded 21 kills against Cortland and broke the 1,000 career kill milestone. With her first kill in this set, Kelly Nowak becomes just the eighth player in Brockport history to record 1,000 career kills. Brockport, though, would fall to nationally ranked Cortland 3 to nothing. Brockport Volleyball then took part in the RIT Invitational, where they had their struggles going 1-3 and three 
with an opening round loss to St. Lawrence, who they lost to in four sets. Then they fell to Nazareth before they took their lone win against Medai College this past Saturday. Women's field hockey opened up Suniac play at home this weekend. Friday, they took on the Cortland Red Dragons, but without their rock-solid defender, Ashley Elms, who was home for the weekend with her family after a family member had passed away earlier in the week. Gina Steffen moved back to defense for the matchup and would help Casey Schreiner make three saves in the first half and shut the door on Cortland, but they would nab a goal on, in the second, and that's all it would take to take that matchup one to nothing. The Eagles could not even muster up a single shot in this game against number 16 nationally ranked Cortland. Schreiner had six saves on the day. Saturday, the Eagles donned 25 and the initials KE on their shoulders in honor of the passing of Ashley Rudy Elms' family member. And they look to avenge their loss to Oswego a week ago. Oswego put some major pressure on early, but Casey Schreiner and even defender Gina Steffen had themselves a goal line stand and would say not right now to the Lakers. Later in the first half, off a corner, the ball would squeak back door to Madison Buckley, who puts the Eagles up 1-0 and that would be supported by some insurance with Jessica Blind adding one herself to take a 2-0 lead just after the half. But Oswego wouldn't go down lightly. They put some pressure on with a goal here, or so they thought it was ruled a kick in and would not count. They would find themselves with one that would count minutes later, but it would not be enough as Brockport grabs their first Suniac win of the year. Casey Schreiner had six saves. To the tennis courts we go where they had plenty of home games this past week. However, it was a tough week for the tennis team where Tuesday's match against Geneseo was postponed because of the weather. That game was moved to Wednesday and the tennis team would lose 9 to nothing for their first conference loss of the season. Then on Friday, the tennis team would lose a close one to Oneonta with a final of 5 to 4. We have the highlights from Saturday's match against New Paltz where sophomore Ellen Myers teamed up with junior Caitlin Richenberg to earn the win at number three doubles by a score of eight to five. This team of Myers and Richenberg are a force to be reckoned with as they're now four and one in the 2011 season. However, Brockport would lose overall seven to two. Well, Brockport men's soccer had one game last week and women's soccer would have that shutout streak on the line for two games. Could they keep it going? We'll be back with soccer in just a moment. You're watching the Eagles Nest on BTV. Hey Brockport sports fans, don't forget to check out some home Brockport sports action as Brockport Women's Volleyball hosts Duville College Wednesday, September 28th at 7 p.m. in the Tunnel North Gymnasium. Then on Thursday, September 29th in the Tunnel North Gymnasium, also at 7 p.m., they will host Alfred. Come and check it out. Welcome back to the Eagles Nest on BTV. A busy week for Brockport sports, but not so much for the men's soccer team, who only had one game this week against Madai College. But most importantly for the Golden Eagles, it was their home opener. And goalie Kyle Son recorded his third shutout of the season. However, the Brockport offense couldn't muster anything on the board. And the final was 0-0 after playing in double overtime. Brockport was dominating on offense, but just couldn't get any goals as Madai's only shot on goal during the entire game came in the first minute of overtime. The Brockport soccer team has two games this week on Friday against Buff State and on Saturday against Fredonia. And women's soccer look to continue their streak of shutouts as they hosted Damon College Wednesday where they got off to a slow start as Damon would score first just minutes into the game and would add two more goals. But unfortunately for Damon, they would be in their own net and Brockport would now take a 2-1 to one lead in the second half. Courtney Belding would then find some room and send one into the twine to ensure the Eagles' 3-1 win. Erin Asquith made five saves on the day, but that would end her shutout streak at three. Saturday, the Golden Eagles hit the road to Ohio where they took on Oberlin College, and it was Kayla McGuire getting on the board first for the Eagles, adding her third goal of the season, team leading in fact, and it appeared that one would be just enough as the defensive unit comes through again for the Eagles, blanking Oberlin one to nothing. Erin Asquith ties her shutout total for last season with her fourth shutout of this season coming in just her sixth game. And now joining us on the program is soccer's goaltender, Erin Asquith. Erin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm probably not as good as you right now. You're having a pretty good season. 
so far. Yeah, so far you got four shutouts already in just six games. What's been the key to your defensive success uh, and, and, I mean, your success? I think a lot of it's probably the chemistry between, I mean, we, we did lose one of our backs last year, Crystal Lang, but um, Arielle and I have played together all the three years that I've been here. Arielle Schneider, she's a sweeper. And we just, we connect pretty well with as far as reading what's coming down and, you know, talking, communicating. And uh, Gina Lang, who's one of our returning fullbacks that I played with, this is my third year with her too. And just the chemistry with our defense, and our defense all over the field, through the midfield, really been coming on strong. So Now, you guys have been having a lot of, a lot of really low scoring games. I mean, is the offense just not been able to find their niche yet? You know, they lo you lost Abby Smith, and you lost Jess Bush, and I mean, are Kayla and Sarah just having some trouble building that chemistry with some of the newer girls? Um, I think that once we start getting that niche, finding that niche that we um, know we can get, that we're really going to start turning, turning in some goals because, honestly, like, we're so close. Like, we had so many shots against Oberlin. It was just kind of like a screwy thing that we didn't score more. But um, I think once we start clicking, we're going to start putting away a lot of goals because, honestly, our offensive movement, everything up there is really – coming together and I think once we yeah, make that I mean, click. I've noticed that you were telling me earlier you know the last couple goals you guys scored kind of some goofy goals you had a couple own goals yeah. and, and then what, what happened there in Oberlin one off the goalie? One off the goalie she deflected it in when it was going wide but we got to take those. Hey, I mean, yeah, you know, take, take wins a win a goal is a goal. Take them when you can get them. Now speaking of wins you guys been in the ECAC tournament the last few years last year you finished second the year before you won you know obviously that's a great accomplishment but I think the real thing you guys want is that SUNYAC tournament. You want to get back to that SUNYAC tournament. What's it going to take to get out of you guys to, to get back to where you guys want to be? Honestly, we've already surprised ourselves, I think, this year. I mean, we're 4-1-1 one and one on the season with some very tough games. And we start our SUNYAC conference this Friday. And we're just very confident. Our team seems to have a, big, a greater, more noticeable chemistry this year. And um, Honestly, I think we're more willing and have more hope this year of going further just because we feel so tight, we feel so connected, we feel such a tight team, a good team. We have confidence. We keep building on that confidence every game, every win we get, every goal we score. And I think that we could carry that through and do some nice things. Now, is that, is that tightness kind of a testament to the leadership you guys have on the team right now? I'd like to say that. <laughs> Being one of the, one of the yeah. older girls among the captains. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that, you know, we got, we got quite a few new players this year. I can't remember exactly how many. But honestly, I think that, um, you know, there, we have a lot of leadership, you know, obviously from, our, from our, us captains. But I feel like everybody is stepping up into the leadership role. All the seniors, even a lot of the juniors are stepping up and being like, hey, you know, we're working hard. Yeah. Practice, games, warm up, everything. Everybody's getting behind each other. And it's yeah. just. Always, always a big help when everyone's chipping in. Yeah. And, and lastly, your senior season, what would I guess you and the other seniors, what would you guys want to leave behind as your senior class legacy? SUNYAC Championship. A SUNYAC Championship. Yep. All right. That's Aaron Asquith, <laughs> Brockport goaltender for the Brockport women's soccer team. Thanks for joining us. No problem. It's and a pleasure. And before we leave you guys, Eagles Nest, we've got your Eagles Nest flying highlight. For Brett Gendra, I mean for Mike Bagger and I'm Brett Gendra, we'll see you guys next week on the Eagles Nest.